Eric West here, hawaiirealestate.org, coming to you from the beautiful island of Maui. I'm here with the now somewhat world famous fish. This is a follow up interview to two interviews that I did with him. One was on a live where he just showed up randomly, and that was pretty cool. Uh, didn't expect him to show up, but he did. And he told us some things about what happened on on Front Street during the fires and revealed some interesting things that have since been corroborated by other witnesses. And then did a second interview where he came on and, and told a little bit more of his story. Uh, since then he's been contacted, I think you said what, over 300 text messages from people all around the world. And so we've decided to, uh, to help Fish. Uh, people have offered to, to send him money, but uh, he's refused essentially. Uh, but now we've set him up, my son just set him up with a, with a Venmo, which is Maui Fish, and we'll put a link in the description if you wanna, if you wanna give to Fish. But I thought having an exclusive interview with him right now would be super helpful, considering what's happening right now in Maui. And there's other, other news agencies have reached out, and of course he, he doesn't wanna talk to just anybody, and we just thought we would take this opportunity so we can clear the air in a couple things. Um, but also to kind of tell the story fresh from the top for those of you that haven't seen those lives or seen those videos. Um, and of course, this video is brought to you by Maui LFG, which stands for Maui Let's Fill the Gap. We're all about bringing you truth, which is a gap we're seeing right now. Communication, which is a huge gap. We're just now starting to get a little 3G and 4G, but the phones are dropping calls. And so there's been a huge communication gap here on Maui. And I believe that Fish is somebody that's really truly helping fill the truth gap so that you guys can get a sense of what's going on here and get some clarity on it. And I think there's nobody better right now to represent uh, Maui in terms of what uh, Fish has experienced and some of his thoughts on what's happening here. So Fish, thank you so much for taking some time out of your day today to come talk to me and, and to share with the world some of your thoughts about what's going on here in Lahaina Town. So maybe just take it from the top. How long have you been here and where are you from? I know you wanted to clear up some things that, that were on a different uh, television show and just you can just kind of clear the air on some of the things you want to make sure people understand. Okay, first and foremost, I am not from here. Uh, I was born in Portland, Oregon, and I've lived here probably 23 years out of the last 40 years. I've been here 15 to 20 times. And uh, so I just want uh, especially the locals here to know that I have never claimed that I am from here. That's not a good thing to say on the island. <laughs> right. And uh, also, I want people to know that I'm not blaming the policemen uh, in this incident. And, uh, but I do blame the, the chief of police or whoever the commanding officer was that told them all to stand down because I feel that they were just as naive as, as I was at the moment. I just didn't understand anything that was going on. So that first and foremost. Okay. So that day that you were leaving Front Street, obviously, you were, uh, you were just, uh, tell, us, tell us the story essentially, just, just to get everyone caught up to what you experienced that day as the fire was coming down the hill. You were in the town of Lahaina, uh, obviously down in that area. Well, I wasn't in downtown Lahaina. I woke up and I realized the, the electricity was off and the, the wind was very, very strong. So I decided not to weave that day, so I did not go downtown to Cheeseburger where I usually do. And I went to Safeway uh, to get some things to eat. And uh, the electricity is off, but they had their alternative electricity. And that was about um, 2.30. And I think it took about an hour and a half in line I got some orange juice, I went to the table and sat down, read the news. <clears throat> and this was right. around, uh, this was Foodland or Safeway? Safeway. Safeway, got you, okay. And, uh, but the internet went out. <laughs> so, uh, and then I noticed a lot of people standing by the door. Um, and so I went up to the door and looked out and there was a fire. And I couldn't believe it. That's, it, it was so thick, I couldn't see the gateway, which is across the street. It was totally blacked out from the smoke and it was streaming across the Kahomakai village. Do you know about what time that would have been fish? Uh, to the best of your knowledge? Uh, I was getting probably around four o'clock. Four o'clock in the afternoon, okay. Yes, yeah, so, uh, I usually carry a clock with me but I left all my stuff behind, all my weaving stuff behind because there's no sense weaving that day. You can't weave in the wind. Uh, right. And uh, so I looked at everybody and they're just standing. I said, I think we should evacuate. This wind's very strong. It could be here in just a couple minutes. 
nobody said anything. And I said, well, uh, I couldn't go down the highway because the poles were down. So I went around Safeway, uh, back where the, where the luau was at, and I saw all the cars were there, and none of them were moving. And I started walking north towards the chart house, which took probably about 10 minutes, and there were peop a few people walking in front of me, and the people in the cars were asking, would you like a ride? And they went into the cars. Then someone asked me, I went, no, there's a fire back there. You, you should be getting out of here, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, they're like, mm hmm, And I figured something must have been obstructing the traffic up ahead, another pole down or something like that. But when I got to the chart house, all that was there, there was a police car parked on the side and one policeman in front of the traffic mm -hmm. and he wouldn't allow them to leave. Right. And I was so, so we've since found a video that you can search up called Herzog, H-E-R-Z-O-G, and it, it details in very living, it's a very daunting, haunting type of video, but you can watch him trying to leave Lahaina. He was coming from Kihei and was, I mean, he was going to Kihei and was routed into Lahaina. He eventually abandons, abandons his car and is able to escape on foot, which he does about the same time possibly as Fish was there, but he walks out on the north end of Front Street next to the chart house. And I've provided screenshots on my channel in the community tab where you can see exactly where the police cars were positioned as Fish just mentioned. And uh, we're getting many different stories corroborating exactly what he said happened. And at that time, at that, in that area, you can still see all the telephone poles, at least, that you can see in those videos are still standing up. And all the traffic was getting routed, basically, through the stoplight, essentially. And no, there, there wasn't like a bunch of cars going on both lanes, escaping really quick, because it looks like they had the southbound lane blocked, essentially. Yes. And there was no, they, they couldn't go down the southbound lane to escape. Yes, they had all the traffic uh, southbound about, thousand feet uh, away and uh, I saw all the police there and when I got there uh, you know I was wondering why they were all stopped and I was wondering is he going to allow me to walk through mm -hmm. but I looked ahead and I saw one person on a bicycle and one person walking ahead and I saw that you know they weren't being stopped and I looked over at the policeman and I said you know what are you doing he says, uh, I'm just following orders. I said, uh, there's a fire back there, you know? And uh, he goes, well, I'm, I'm just following orders. And I'm wondering what is going on. And so I just decided, well, I'm going to walk right by him. This is crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got to be letting these people out, you know, because it's going to be obvious in a minute or two that there was a, there was a fire. But from where he was at, you couldn't see down the highway around where the all around the corner of what was happening and uh but it's pretty obvious there's billowing smoke and black and well it's, you see the way that it curves you couldn't see around Kohoma Kai right, you know, right where it was at when I walked out of Safeway so you had information that he didn't have because of what you just saw coming mm -hmm. down Front Street that maybe he couldn't see where he was at essentially right, exactly okay, I got you so uh I decided that well I'm just I'm just gonna walk on and I did and it takes about 15 minutes to walk from Chart House to Waikuli Beach. And during the 15 minutes I was walking, I kept turning around to see if any cars were coming out. None came out. And I was totally confused, but the wind's blowing, and you, you know you can hardly even stand up, and all the traffic was backed up there. Mm -hmm. But all in that 15 minutes, from the time I got to Waikuli Beach, I couldn't see around the corner there anymore. Not one car came out. Wow. And uh, then, as I said, I'm fighting the wind, and then uh, all of a sudden I, I heard boom, boom, and I figured I've heard telephone poles where I'm at fall down and make that sound. So, okay, some the more telephone poles are falling yeah. out. And then I thought I heard screaming, but I really couldn't discern because of the wind. You know, your mind starts, mm -hmm. you know, you get these strange sounds when it's going through the wires and all this, and I'm like, no, this can't be. This just can't be. And uh, so I made my way back to my tent and uh, hungered down for the night. It got shredded, you know, it's, it's, and I woke up just totally filthy. I had no idea what had happened. Wow. And uh, so I went across to the park and I saw two people walking and I asked them, do you, do you know if Safeway's open? They said, yeah, 
I said, okay. And so I started walking towards Safeway. And then I realized when I got to uh, Leilii, which is uh, where the tennis court and the Civic Center is, yep. the fire had gotten that far, about a five minute walk from where I'm camped at. And I had, wow, I had no idea I got this far. And as I'm walking down Front Street, across the street and on the other side, everything's burned out. Uh, I'm in shock, wow. just total shock. So and, did, you, uh, did you notice any emergency vehicles or personnel or people or anything? What did you observe when you were walking down Front Street the morning after the fire? Well, when I got to Front Street, where the chart house was, uh, they had it blocked off. And uh, uh, someone went through there, and then one of the somebody in a uniform came over to tell the people that were standing there, don't let anyone down that way. And when I looked, I saw all these burned out cars. And I immediately felt like, <laughs> I, I, why didn't I do something, you know, more, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I knew, but I, I just, could, I was in shock. And so I'm walking down the highway and breathing in all this stuff. I'm coughing and my eyes are this and I'm looking, I, I'm just totally in shock. And they didn't let them, and all this stuff's going through my mind. But anyway, I get to Safeway, and it, it was closed. And uh, so, uh, so I, I walked back, and uh, there were, all the roads were blocked, and I just could not believe the destruction that, that had happened there. And, uh, but, you know, I just, and the internet was not working for a few days, mm -hmm. and uh, I just, didn't talk to anybody about it. You know, it's just, I had no idea, and also I felt guilty. You know, mm -hmm. I felt I was a watchman in the tower, and there was a fire, and I didn't warn the people, and blood's on my hands. No, I mean, that's not the case, Fish. But, uh... You were given uh, an exit, you know, and you followed your instinct, and... Well, the only people survived were the ones that went through the barricade, and, you know. Right. And, uh, I just... And so, do you so, have any do you have any theories? Do you have any thoughts on why? I mean, I know you're saying it's not the police officer's fault and whoever's in charge, but do you have any any? I know you, it's been a couple of weeks now. You've had a lot of time to think and talk and ask people, and people have called you. And you know, you're just a to me, you're like a like a sage wiseman. That's how I've always looked at you. You're somebody that knows things that other people don't know because of your background, your history, your education, the things that you've done in your life, and you've been here, and you listen, and I know you're a man of God, I think you've got a faith, and you know the Bible. What do you, what do you think? <sighs> it was a choreographed disaster. You know, the pattern of it is just too obvious. You know, not only were they blocking where I was at, the other end of town, I find out, they had, the Maui Electric was trying to set the poles up during the wind, and they had the highway blocked off with that. And the, the lack of communication, the sirens not going off, the water not being used, I'm, and you could go on and on. It, it's, and then they're lying to us about the people and the children. That's why a lot of people been contacting me because they want to know what happened to the kids. Well, all you gotta do is extrapolate. There's 3,001 students in Lahaina. Uh, a thousand of them have been accounted for. They're going to either alternative schools or online. That's 2,000 children not accounted for. And this has been weeks afterwards. And they're talking about 100 or maybe 850 or 1,100 that are missing. It doesn't add up. Nothing adds up. It's Nothing kinda, adds up. I mean, no pun here, but it seems kind of fishy, don't it, Fish? Very fishy. Very fishy. And also, I went to open a bank account and I never told anyone which bank or what I had done. And the next day I got a text on my phone saying someone's trying to uh, withdraw cash from your account. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to the link and it had the uh, online thing for that bank, which I had not installed or anything yet. Mm -hmm. And uh, had I, I probably would have had all my money taken. So I called the bank and I told them what happened. And they said, oh, well, someone tried to fish you. I'm like, but 
I haven't told anyone I went to the bank. How could they know it? There's nothing on my phone or anything. So fish right out of the gate gets to the bank account for the first time in 12 years, yes. and you get fished right out of the gate. As, as a matter of fact, I think I mentioned this to you earlier, but I have a, a couple that uh, lost two homes in Lahaina, and they contacted the phone number that they were given for the Red Cross, and they followed all the directions, and they're in their late 70s. They're not very tech savvy. And I've got it all recorded. They just don't want me to share it because they're private people. But they're out of their mind crazy right now because they followed all these instructions to get their Red Cross assistance and ended up getting scammed, getting fished as well. So this is a warning to all those people out there that are trying to process claims with FEMA and Red Cross. Be very, very aware that there are scammers out there injecting themselves. I'm not saying it's the Red Cross. I'm just saying be very, very careful. And I think you've already experienced that, right? People yeah. taking advantage of people when they're as down and out as they possibly could be. So uh, if you missed the beginning of this, um, of course, we're having some difficulty with our live transmissions because we're one of the few Starlinks on Maui. But uh, we uh, Fish has, has, has had over 300 people reach out to him, try to give him money. He's refused it, but we've told him, hey, Fish, man, it's, it's time to set up a Venmo. So we've done that. It's Maui Fish. If you want to give to, to, to Fish, please do so um, freely. And the interesting thing is people have come up to him and tried to give him gift cards and money, and he just says, I don't need it. You know, just give it to someone else that does. So that's the kind of, the kind of man you're dealing with here. And if, if he does get some money from this, he wants to use it to promote some of the things that God's put on his heart to share with the world on, a, on maybe a platform someday. So he's going to try to take, he's a minimalist uh, in the highest degree of the word, um, but he's going to take some of the funds and I'll hopefully use it to rebuild his life, but also a, a platform someday to share some of, his, uh, some of his sage wisdom that he's come across. So, it's a, it's, so back to our, our topic at hand here. It's an orchestrated, what did you say? Uh, choreographed disaster. Cho choreographed disaster. Um, are you willing to go as far as to say who, who, or, or what, or why, or are you just going to leave it at that? You let them make their own decisions. Do you have any insight there? And again, we're not. I'm not a tinfoil hat conspiracy theory guy, but do you have any, anything you want to share? And, and I don't. I understand if you don't, but is, if there's anything you want to share on that topic, do you have any, anything that you want to? Well, it's something probably. Anyone who's been on the internet for 30 years, like I have, knows that BlackRock and Vanguard are the owners of the Hawaiian Electric Company, where FEMA's staying at their $1,000 plus rooms is owned by Bill Gates. Uh, mm -hmm. All the same names keep popping up. The sheriff who was involved with the Las Vegas Dupico, he was here for five weeks. He wants a 29% increase in pay, and he's not only the police chief, but he's the coroner. Right, and which is against the statute, right? Against You're the statute supposed to be a, law, but right. there it is. You know, what are you going to do about it? Right. So he's in charge as a coroner. Well, it's the same as Hunter, Hunter Thompson, who wrote a book on George Bush, and he, what, he was very excited about getting it published. Two days before it was getting published, he committed suicide by shooting himself in the head twice. The coroner <laughs> put it out as a suicide. So um, that's fact. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of things that went wrong simultaneously. So in my mind, the way I look at that is the probability of that happening in nature is very unusual. Like if you, if you have one thing that doesn't happen, the, the siren doesn't go off, okay. Mm -hmm. Or maybe the water didn't work. I mean, mm -hmm. for one of these things to be in place, I think is somewhat reasonable. Right. But to have absolutely everything go wrong that part to me seems very unlikely. And so therefore, it does point the finger in the direction of some type of human causation. Would it you agree? Not, it was not organic. Right, thank you. So. Yeah. so we obviously would love to hear your comments, what you think, but more importantly, and I've said this time and time again, because I'm getting calls like, like fishes from people all around the world talking about what happened. I don't know about you, Fish, but I'm a little more concerned about what's about to happen. Yes. Right? Exactly. What are the, what's the next step that they, whoever they are, is going to take that we're not thinking about because they're creating confusion, right? One of the things from the art of war is the secret is to create, yes. right, confusion so that the enemy does not know your truest intent. Right. So what I want to do, and the reason, honestly, I wanted to talk to Fish is I believe 
because of this interview, somebody out there that's way above our pay grade, right? That's in a completely different level of government or society or intelligence or I'm not saying intelligence as in they're smarter than us, but they have information access that is beyond our reach. They can now mobilize assets. They can now mobilize attorneys. They can mobilize agencies of the government. They can mobilize things because they're hearing of this story from fish. So sometimes I believe God uses interesting messengers to envoy or beacon or clarion call a holy assembly of people together to do the right thing. And I think ultimately that's the call that I have for you. So if you're listening to this and you're one of those people, I pray to God that you will be moved to do the right thing and to do the next thing and to help us because the way I look at it is not not here on Maui, not on these grounds that are holy to these people with this beautiful, lovely people that have served people on vacation for decades and, and grew sugar cane and pineapples and not here, not in Hawaii. And we need your help right now. And quite frankly, Fish, the way I feel is if they can get away, whoever they are, with it here, they're going to be coming to your backyard next. This is so, a shakedown, I mean, a shakedown cruise. You know, this whole thing will be analyzed and they'll see where, you know, and that's just the way they work. You know, they'll do it, they'll see where they, they got to control this or they got to control that, and they'll, they'll fine tune it, mm. and it's, it'll happen else, elsewhere. And when it happens elsewhere, this will be forgotten just like Las Vegas, you know, mm. case dismissed, you know, right. closed. So what, what I'm asking, I don't know if you agree with me, that we need to draw a line in the sand right now. That's right. We need to draw a line in the sand at Maui, because if they don't draw a line in the sand, like you said, it's just going to be an exercise of education for them mm -hmm. to refine it and do it better in the next spot, whoever they is and whatever it is. But I think it's time for people to step up and do the right thing and to fight the battle now and come forth and put on their armor, take out their, their weapons of intellect or whatever it is that they need to fight this. And, and I also believe that prayer is essentially yes. is essential at this time. So, well, Yahweh does not need your prayers, but... You need your prayers to remind yourself. You know, that's what prayers are, is to remind yourself who you are. Yahweh does not need your prayers to exist. Mm. We need our prayers to exist and to receive the messages from Him. To receive the, intellect, to receive the discernment yes. and what the, act, what the call to action is, the, the, the marching for, orders, if you will. I always pray for wisdom, wisdom and discernment. And that I don't go to the left or the right, and sometimes I do. I admit, yeah. you know, th sometimes I say things that I wanted to say but I didn't say. I think we're all guilty of that. For sure. But I'm aware of it, and when it happens, I stop it. You know, I do it. You know, I'm trying to be. You know, I am a servant of the Lord. You know, to what degree? I'm not the least. I'm not the most. I'm whatever degree that is. That's the way I see myself, and. Uh, all I wanted in life, I had a request to the, to the Lord that before I die, I want to know the truth. Mm. I, I don't want anything else, just that. I just want to know truth. the truth, because the truth will set you free. And I also know, Fish, that your name is because of your ministry. And yes. I know that you've been sharing that on Front Street for a long time. So in case you guys don't know, if you haven't been to Maui, if you're you know, whatever, this is the gentleman that sits right next to Cheeseburger in Paradise. He sits at... I used to call it like, you know, ground zero of Lahaina. It's like Lahaina Luna and Front Street. That's his turf right there. And he makes things and fish specifically. He gives them to kids. But angel fish. Angel fish, thank you. And what, what is your message uh, that you share with people all the time on Front Street? Well, I try to get them into a dialogue about the Lord, but I find many people are ignorant. You know, many people are saying, Oh, Yeshua can come at any moment. And I say, no, no, it, that's not true. The temples have to be rebuilt first, mm. and the sacrifice has to start. You know, well, our minister said he could come any minute. I said, your minister is wrong. Daniel and Revelations both state the temple must be rebuilt first, and the sacrifice must resume for seven years. And in the middle of that seven years, the, the sacrifice will be stopped, and this is the time of the beast. And Yeshua, was, he's, the reason he was crucified on Calvary is the Calvary always comes at the last minute. And <laughs> so, you know, he's not going to come before the temple's rebuilt. You know, it's not my opinion. 
this is scripture. This is Old Testament and New Testament. And until you realize that, I mean, that's one of the first steps to wisdom. Mm. The first step is to acknowledge God, that he is good and he is just. And from there, all other wisdom comes through. Yeah, amen. Well, thank you for sharing that. And I know you know your stuff when it comes to the Word of God and you study it all the time. And from that comes your discernment and your wisdom, I believe. And I believe you're a very wise man. And I thank you for sharing this. We need more kapuna, right? Yes. To come forward with their wisdom, right? What they're hearing from God, because I believe that it's the elders that direct the younger generations to do the right thing. So is there any final words you want to say to the people that are watching this? Anything, any final thoughts or directions or just anything that's on your heart before we end the interview? Yeah. For all you people whose hearts are turned towards us that want to help us, God bless you. You know, it's just, it's, it's unfortunate that a tragedy has to Just thank you and bless you, and I, I can't say anymore. Yeah. Well, thank you, Fish. I appreciate you coming here, man. And I just i am so thankful that you're alive. So many people asked about you. You have no idea. I've been featuring Fish on my channel for years, and, uh, and you're just such an important part of the community. You're a, you're a uh, foundational cornerstone in so many ways. And in the least of ways, now I believe has become the, some of the greatest of ways that you're serving this community. So I thank you, man. Know that you are loved. You are so loved by the people of Maui. And how the people around the world get to know you. <laughs> and how special you are. And if you want to give to Fish again, Maui Fish is his Venmo. We want to support you in whatever you want to do in the future. And thank thank you. you for all you've done. And thank you for coming on my, uh, my little channel here. We really appreciate it. So with that, guys, if you could just do me a favor, please share the video. Please like and subscribe. That helps beat the mainstream media that is watering down the message of what's happening here. Please give to MauiLFG.org. If you have a resource besides money, you can go to MauiLFG.org, and you can put in your resource whatever it is. If you have a need, if you're someone out there that's in need, you can also go to that website. For example, we have people that are still stuck in Lahaina Roads right now that we're going to feature them tomorrow. They're still stuck in the burn zone and they can't get to the hotel at the Hyatt or any kind of lodging because they've been turned down by FEMA. So FEMA has said because they have uh, an insurance policy that they can't go to lodging. So they're stuck. They're in their 70s. One of them has extreme bad dementia. So it's important that we start sharing what's going on here on Maui with the world. So if you, can do if you can't do anything, share and like and subscribe to the channel. But at a very, at a very maximum, <laughs> not a minimum, at a minimum do that. But if you certainly want to give, please give. If you want to give to, to, to Fish, that's obviously the format of our interviews is we feature somebody and then we give you their direct contact information so you can give to them so there's no question about where the money's going. I believe we're going to revolutionize the way money is given to victims in disasters because of what we're doing here. And then go to MauiLFG.org to register yourself as a resource or someone that's in need. And please sound the alarm. Scream it from the mountaintops make your fingers bloody at the middle of the night like I'm doing every night, sending out and w awakening the world to what's happening on Maui. And I just believe that once this message goes into your ears and into your heart, God will tell you what to do. And uh, this thing is going to unfold according to His plan, not who is ever doing their plan. We are going to foil the plans of the enemy. And if we could, are you comfortable saying a prayer just to end this? Well, I follow scripture to, to say that my prayer is in my closet. <laughs> Do you, is it okay if I say a prayer? Yes, it's All okay right. for you. So dear Lord, we just thank you for this time with fish. We just end this, end this, this transmission, this message in Jesus' name. We seal it. The enemy cannot use it in any way, shape, or form. As a matter of fact, we speak infusion into the camp of the enemy. And we thank you, Lord, that your will will be done. This message will go into those people's hearts and minds, that you will move them to do what they're to do. And we just thank you ahead of time, Lord, that your glory will be revealed, that your will shall preside, and that your sovereign justice will be seen in this scenario. And those people that are negligent, that didn't do, that are lying, that are cheating, that are covering, that you, we, we forgive them, Lord, honestly, and we hand it over to you because God... 
the, the vengeance belongs to him, and I know that, um, that good things will come out of this. We shall rise from the ashes in Lahaina, but we will also pave the path for future situations so they, they do not have to endure this ever again on planet Earth. And we say this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Aloha. Aloha. Shalom.